Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Technical Test Analyst. We have just completed chapter 2 with discussion on sort of a lot of techniques uh, from the white boss testing and uh, we also did good some number of sample questions from the chapter 2. Now we are getting started with the next topic and next chapter that is chapter 3 which is going to talk about analytical techniques and the very first topic which we are covering as a part of this tutorial is 3.1 introduction. Though it is simple and short but yet important to start from the basics of learning something new. When it comes to the analytical <clears throat> introduction of uh, what exactly analytical techniques are then it's very important to understand what exactly the static and dynamic analysis is. Now when you talk about the foundation level you learned about static testing and dynamic testing a lot that means you understood what exactly is review process what exactly is uh, different types of review how it is conducted why it is important to conduct static testing on work products and documents which you create as a part of the process and parallelly you also understood what is dynamic analysis or dynamic testing is which is with respect to the levels of testing that is unit integration system and acceptance as so four levels to understand about dynamic testing but yes on the other side we do have something called as static analysis and dynamic analysis where static analysis and dynamic analysis are different when you talk about testing something it basically deals with finding an issue like is there a problem with this particular product? Now when you say static analysis or just analysis, analysis is all about analyzing the root cause or finding the main reason behind the issue. So testing will tell you what the defect is and analysis will tell you what was the reason behind it. So that's how uh, testing and analysis are different from each other. Now again, for both the things we do have different parameters like for testing we have static and dynamic testing and for analysis we have static and dynamic analysis. The main reason or main common basic thing remains the same that is static testing uh, is just like limited to the work products non-executable things similarly here the static analysis will be to evaluate a code without running it or working with the design part or algorithms or control flows or you know data flow charts but not executing them as a part of application similarly when it comes to dynamic analysis the dynamic analysis involves executing the product and then evaluating or finding out the main reason behind any issue which you think is a probable reason for degrading your quality characteristics so yes that's how the testing and analysis are different and this is what the difference between static analysis and dynamic analysis is to further add on, we do have some of the inputs from the syllabus itself. That is, static analysis encompasses the analytical testing that can occur without executing the software. Of course, that is what we were talking about. Because the software is not executing, it is examined either by a tool or by a person to determine if it will process correctly when it is executed. So yes, when it comes to code or design or control flow or data flow, these kind of things will be actually evaluated either manually or with help of tool. Because it might be difficult to find certain defects or root causes manually yourself. Like you know, undefined variable or variable which is defined but never used, calling structures, assertions, or even if you talk about a dead code, security vulnerabilities, these kind of things from the code would be quite difficult to find out by manual approach or static testing. So the static view of the software allows detailed analysis without having to create the data and the precondition that would cause a scenario to be exercised. So just remember one thing, if you, if you, when you're doing static testing or static analysis, it's not going to involve execution of the product. The dynamic analysis on the other side requires the actual execution of the code and used to find faults which are more easily detected when the code is executing. For example, you talk about memory leaks, CPU utilizations, or security issues. So these things can be actually done while the product is being executed. So dynamic involves executing or interacting with the product to analyze and find out the root causes for what exactly might be the reason behind the screen 
which might be reflecting as a small defect on the top. Dynamic analysis, as with static analysis, may rely on tools or may rely on an individual monitoring the executing system, watching for such indicators as a rapid increase of the memory use. Now that's just one example, but you do have a lot of monitoring tools available in market which have different monitors inbuilt. So you may keep an eye on them while your execution is happening to make sure that everything is up to the mark. If you see that there is something which is getting deviated from the expectation, then you will look into more details of that. So yes, again, dynamic analysis, just like static analysis, can also be done manually using the monitors or can be done via the tools. So yes, the approach will have similarities, but the definition or meaning behind it is slightly different than each other. So that's what is more about analytical and uh, analytical techniques where we have static analysis and dynamic analysis to talk about the basic introduction on how they are different. Now we will be exploring more about both of them, that is static analysis and dynamic analysis in this chapter. So stay tuned for that. We'll be getting back to you with more details on this. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team, and happy learning.